Holbeck and my background is that I practice as a board certified pediatrician and I also studied hospital and molecular epidemiology at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. Um, I've been asked to speak about smart meters and 5G and each of these topics really, could really fill up hours of discussion but today I have 10 minutes so what I've done is I linked pertinent articles and speeches to the MCU site which uh, you can be found, it can be found on mcu.today. Uh, thank you, Jay, for all your help. You're very welcome. And with my background in medicine, uh, I will focus my time on why I am concerned about smart meters and 5G from a health perspective. I will review the findings in the medical literature regarding the extensive disease caused by wireless radiation and then give some ideas about how to decrease, to decrease your wireless radiation exposure while still remaining high tech. And lastly, a call to action. What each of us can do to greatly improve our health by taking action, especially in our schools, and by contacting and informing our government officials. Okay, we're all conservatives here. This being the case, we know that the purpose of government is to secure the rights of the governed. First among these rights is the unalienable right to life. When our own government is acting in a way that subverts that right, we need to take notice and we need to take action. So why should we be so concerned about smart meters and 5G? Number one, both emit wireless radiation. Number two, both are, are, are or will be widespread. It is estimated, like Norm said, that when fully deployed, 5G wireless radiation transmitters will be placed every two to 10 houses. Every two to 10 houses. Think about that for a moment. Who here would move next to a cell tower if they had a choice? Anyone? If you had a choice, would you move next to one? No. One person? <laughs> no, no. She's kidding. No, I would not move next to a cell tower if I had a choice. Well, well, if 5G is fully implemented, there will be a wireless radiation transmitter placed approximately every two to ten houses, and you will have no choice. It will be emitting radiation into your home 24 seven and there's nothing you can do about it. We currently have thousands of medical studies showing the dangers of wireless radiation, which I will talk about in a minute. And yet the plan is to place hundreds of thousands of additional wireless radiation transmitters in front of our homes. That's the plan. Sadly, they are deploying 5G with no testing, no regulation and no safety guidelines. You might be asking yourself, how can this happen in the United States? I mean, how, how can this be happening in our country? I sure ask that question. Well, the reason it is happening is that we do not have a true free market in the telecom industry. Due to federal laws passed in 1996, and even in our own state last year, the telecom industry is effectively indemnified against lawsuits for adverse health impacts. In a free market, there are consequences for bad actors. There are no such consequences for the telecom industry. Sadly, the organization which is supposed to hold them accountable for bad behavior, the FCC, is a captive agency. It is bought and paid for by the telecom industry. Remarkably, it is not physicians and scientists, but rather the FCC that is in charge of determining what a safe wireless radiation level is. The higher the acceptable level, the easier it is for that telecom industry to deploy the untested technology to a neighborhood near you without any ramifications. The telecom industry will make billions of dollars with the implementation of 5G. The current FCC chair is Ajit Pai. His background, a Verizon lawyer. The FCC chairman before him was Tom Wheeler. What did Tom Wheeler do before he becoming FCC chair? He was a lobbyist for the cable and wireless industry. What is Tom Wheeler doing now after being FCC chair? He is the CEO of the Cellular Telecommunications and Internet Association. Having the FCC in charge of determining safe wireless radiation levels for our population is like putting the tobacco industry in charge of determining how many packs of cigarettes it's safe to smoke each day. We need medical doctors and scientists with no links to the telecoms to be in charge of determining what is safe radiation levels for our health, not telecom lawyers and lobbyists. So on to reason number three why we should be concerned about smart meters and 5G. Both are an invasion of your privacy. 
in particular, 5G with the Internet of Things and all the de devices being connected will collect massive amounts of personal information on you. This is not like going from 3G to 4G. This connects all the devices and massively increases your radiation exposure. So now back to the medical studies and what we do definitely know about the health impacts of wireless radiation exposure. We have thousands of medical studies that point out the following. The adverse health impacts of wireless radiation include cancer, oxidative damage, DNA damage, DNA repair failure, cardiac arrhythmias and other effects on the heart, muscle, as well as blood pressure and vascular effects, disrupted calcium metabolism, diabetes, ADHD, behavioral disorders and learning difficulties, headaches, depression, tinnitus, sleep disturbances, memory loss, changes in the blood-brain barrier and effects in the neuron firing rate and EEG, disrupted immune function and change in stress proteins and reproduction and fertility effects. These impacts are well documented in over 3,600 papers. A compendium of these studies can be found at bioinitiative.org. I have included this website link as well as many other helpful website and policy papers and speeches on the MCU site. These include valuable information from hundreds of physicians and scientists as well as other experts in the field. Sites like mdsafetech.org, babysafeproject.org, ehtrust.org, and American Academy of Pediatrics links as well as other sites that frame the problem well like wearetheevidence.org and here in Michigan, Michigan Safe Technology Link and many, many others. I have also attached a paper titled Policy Guidance Regarding Wireless Radiation, which was written by my husband and I for your reference. This paper addresses both the benefits and risks of wireless technology. It has been well received both nationally and internationally. I'm including it because it frames the problem well and provides a quick access point to a uh, quick access to point out what is currently being done in other countries to limit their exposure. In response to the feedback we received from this paper, my husband, a former, a former Michigan State Senator and aerospace engineer, recently hosted an international forum on this topic featuring top experts in the field. The former president of Microsoft Canada expressed his concerns regarding wireless radiation, as well as what needs to be done to reduce our exposure. Dr. Melnick, the top researcher in a recent $25 million, 14-year national study done, done by the National Toxicology Program of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, was at this forum discussing the finding that there was clear evidence that wireless radiation causes cancer and DNA damage. In addition, there were many other top experts in the field at the forum, and I have included a link to their talks on the MCU site. Okay, and currently children in the US schools are being exposed to massive amounts of wireless radiation due to the number of Wi-Fi routers in the schools. Even when they are not using their tablets and laptops, they continue to be exposed to large amounts of radiation all day long. Thankfully, other countries like Israel and France are paying attention to the overwhelming scientific evidence and are banning or severely restricting the use of Wi-Fi and cell phone in schools. The most sensitive population to the adverse health impacts of wireless radiation are children. As a pediatrician, pediatrician it breaks my heart to see what we are exposing them to. So now what can we do to still be high tech but greatly decrease our radiation exposure? I have a handout here um, that if anybody would like one, um, I made. I have a handout here with tips and I have also linked this to the MCU site. Number one, call the White House, 202-456-1414 and let President Trump know you want them to have studies done by medical professionals to prove 5G is safe before it is placed right outside your home. These studies should be completely independent from the influence of the telecom industry and the FCC. Tell him that currently 5G is being deployed with no testing, no regulation, and no safety guidelines. 
Let him know that hundreds of doctors and scientists are extremely concerned about this massive wireless radiation exposure from 5G because of the thousands of medical studies showing wireless radiation causes many health problems, including cancer and DNA damage. I am certain that if President Trump knew about the disastrous health impacts of 5G, that he would not encourage it. He would pursue getting the job done in a safe manner. Two, call your U.S. representative and senators and tell them the same thing. Three, go to your city council and encourage them to put forward ordinances that oppose 5G. Four, tell the electric company you want to keep your analog meter, and if this is not possible, opt out of your smart meter in exchange for a non-transmitting model. Five, turn Wi-Fi off in your home and instead hardwire your tablet and laptops with an Ethernet cable which results in zero radiation, and it's faster and more secure than Wi-Fi 2. If this is not possible, turn off your Wi-Fi while you're sleeping and put the router as far away from you as possible. Wi-Fi routers emit radiation constantly, even when one is not using a laptop or tablet. Also, put your laptop in airplane mode. It can still access the internet in airplane mode if you are connected via an ethernet cable. Six, remove your cordless phones from your home. They are very high in wireless radiation and the base of the phone emits radiation constantly. Instead, use old-fashioned corded phones which have zero radiation. Seven, turn your cell phone on airplane mode when not in use. Use your speaker phone. Do not place your cell phone next to your head or carry it in your bra. Keep as far away from your body as possible. Turn off the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings in your cell phone when not using them. Do not use Bluetooth earpieces. Use AirTube headsets instead. Text instead of call if possible. Keep phone calls short on your cell phone and use corded phones for longer conversations if possible. Try not to use your cell phone while in the car because that greatly increases the radiation exposure. When, number eight, when watching a movie on your device, download it first and then turn it to airplane mode while you watch it. Number nine, talk to your local school board and PTA Encourage them to motivate the schools to eliminate or greatly reduce Wi-Fi and cell phone use. Instead, hardwire the kids' laptops and tablets like they're doing in other countries to drastically decrease the wireless radiation exposure. The kids will still be high tech and they will be a lot healthier. Thank you for your attention. Both my husband and I agree that wireless radiation is the real number one environmental issue of the day. I will say...